This video talks about how to calculate the oxygen content of blood. Okay. So whenever we're thinking of blood, let's say this is our vessel and the, this is our RBC and this is our plasma. When we think of blood, we actually think of both RBC and plasma together, right? So oxygen can be in two places. Oxygen can be bound to the RBC or oxygen can be dissolved in the plasma. So when we measure oxygen content, we take both of them into account. We take oxygen bound to hemoglobin plus oxygen dissolved in plasma. Okay. We take both into account. Now how can we measure? Well it's easy, easy to measure oxygen dissolved in plasma which is really this equation right here. Oxygen content is this thing times this plus dissolved oxygen. So we, that is easy to measure. Okay. Now what about oxygen bound to hemoglobin? How are we going to measure that? Now oxygen bound to hemoglobin can be divided into two parts and I'll talk about it up here. So oxygen bound to hemoglobin can be measured by when something binds to some other thing. We usually take the binding capacity times percent saturation how much saturation there is, is going to give us how much bound of that substance that is, right? The binding capacity, what's their capacity times the percentage that is saturated is going to give us oxygen bound to hemoglobin. And since we're me measuring oxygen, I'm just going to put oxygen here. Oxygen binding capacity times percent saturation. Now, oxygen binding capacity is really a fixed value, okay? It's going to be 20.1 milliliter per deciliter which I have written here okay so that binding capacity is kind of fixed all we have to do is add multiply it with the percent saturation now percent saturation is kind of interesting how so well in a normal blood the percent saturation is about 15 gram per deciliter okay that's the that's the that's a normal amount of hemoglobin in blood. When this 15 drops to 5 gram per deciliter, that's when we have cyanosis. Okay. Just random facts, thought that was interesting. Anyways, moving on, anytime we have a patient who is anemic, an anemic patient is going to have decreased oxygen content because the hemoglobin falls but the oxygen saturation and the partial pressure of oxygen do not change. Obviously because the amount of hemoglobin that there is, it will bind to the oxygen. The saturation doesn't change, the dissolved oxygen doesn't change. It's just that there is decreased content because there is decreased hemoglobin in number. So in an anemic, that's what we are going to see. So can you think of a situation where the PO2 or the partial pressure of oxygen is going to be low? Well, the partial pressure of oxygen is a dissolved oxygen in the plasma. It's going to be low in chronic diseases, chronic lung diseases, for example, COPD. So that's what they have written, uh, what I have written down here. What about exercise? What gas analysis, what kind of gas analysis are we going to see in a patient who's exercising, what values is going to be different? Is it going to be the uh, PO2 in the artery, PO2 in the vein, oxygen content in the vein, oxygen content in the artery? So for, for an exercising person, the most difference is seen in partial pressure of oxygen in the vein. Okay, the partial pressure of oxygen in the vein is going to be decreased. That's, uh, that's the most significant change for uh, for exercise. So now that we measured the oxygen content of blood, where can we can we use this oxygen content? 
Well, we can use oxygen con content of blood to measure oxygen delivery to tissues. And how can we do so? We take oxygen content of blood and multiply it with carbon monoxide to find the oxygen delivery to tissues.